Marion Cricket Club was founded in 1865. The organizers were a group of 15 young cricket enthusiasts who envisioned a club with facilities and grounds large enough to gather and play cricket matches, a sport quite popular in Philadelphia at that time. Due to determination and financial ingenuity, the club grew in leaps and bounds, and by the end of the 1800s, the cricket club had a sizable membership with clubhouse and grounds located at the intersection of Haverford Station Road and Montgomery Avenue in the town of Haverford. Cricket reached its peak of popularity near the turn of the century, and Marion hosted some of the finest international teams in match play. While cricket is still played on the grounds of Marion today, and teams from Canada, Bermuda, and England compete here, the team's sport has long since given way to racket sports as the club's most popular activity. In 1879, the first game of tennis was played on the lush green lawns of Marion. The sport enjoyed by ladies and gentlemen alike has come to be the most popular sport of any at Marion today. At the peak of its involvement with the international sport, Marion was the site of Davis Cup match play and for many years hosted the Pennsylvania Lawn Tennis Championships. The first such championship tournament was played in 1894. Since that time, tennis immortals such as Tilden, Satius, Laver, Ash, and Connors have competed, as well as the finest women in the sport, Gibson, Smith, King, and Everett. During the 1900s, Marion grew to include a variety of sports, including soccer, platform tennis, field hockey, and even golf, which is now the Marion Golf Club. Yet there was one sport more than any other for which Marion and its members are known worldwide, squash. Mr. Darwin Kingsley, a member of the Marion Cricket Club and executive director of the U.S. Squash Rackets Association, spoke of the game's origins in England and America in a recent interview. Well, squash began originally in England, uh, they say at Harrow School. There was an ancestral game, hard rackets or rackets, played on a long cement-like court with a ball that bounces like a golf ball in cement. And while the students were waiting to get their turn in the court, apparently they picked up a broken ball, a piece of rubber, and a broken racket and started hitting the ball against the wall. And somewhere along the line, it occurred to the powers at the school that maybe you was something that would take care of a lot more students. In fact, you could put roughly three squash courts in one rackets court and take care of three times as many students. And a game evolved from that. It crossed the ocean to this country. Our first national championship was 1903. Uh, the first formal game with rules, it's a little bit like ice hockey. Until then, you go to different cities and uh, all of the ice rinks are different sizes. Uh, there was no real standardization until about the late 1920s when there was a formal national association. We had championships before that, but more formal rules and specifications were developed in the late 1920s. Uh, you mentioned that the first national uh, championship was 1903. It's ringing a bell with me that during that same time, Marion, I believe, had some form of the game, or, or not too long after that. Oh, yes. Marion was in, in existence. Philadelphia and Boston and later New York were the centers of the game. Uh, the first national champion was a Mr. Miskey, who at that time played at the Overbrook Golf Club, which he, before it became Lankanau Hospital and way, way, way back. And doubles grew about 25 years later, and the first national doubles was in the early 1930s, and again, Philadelphia dominated, and in fact, the sport of doubles is still centered in Philadelphia. There were more doubles courts in the Philadelphia Association than any other association in the country. Right. During that same interview with Mr. Kingsley, I asked what it was that had kept squash from gaining the same notoriety and popularity in America that tennis had gained. Do you think that's a, a, a fair way to, uh, to, to, to look at the game? Is it an, an exclusive sport? It was certainly exclusive when you were talking about the small eastern colleges and private schools. Today, like any racket sport, I think there's an economic exclusion in that there's just so many people with so much money to pay on recreational sport. 
but it has lost the social exclusion that used to be with it. Doesn't mean that it didn't play to a lot of the clubs, but I was out in Los Angeles, Venice, about four years ago, and there was a Rolls Royce parked next to a garbage truck, and the owners were on the court playing. That would not have happened 15, 20 years ago. So it still has the image, and any sport where you have to pay some money to play the sport uh, has an economic image, really. Like tennis, squash is played both in singles and doubles matches. Aside from the obvious differences, such as court size, number of players, and liveliness of the ball, there are some more subtle nuances. Mr. Bill Wilson, chairman of Marion Squash Committee, described what he felt the major differences were between doubles and singles squash. Uh, I am a singles player, and I enjoy singles. I'm not a doubles player. Uh, singles is a game of quickness, sharpness, and great conditioning. You have to be able to think very quickly and make your shot when the opening is there. In doubles, you still have to be in condition, but it's a game more of patience. Uh, you don't have to go for the shot as quickly in doubles as you do in singles got another fellow in there to help you, your partner, and uh, it's a game of patience, much more lobbing in doubles. You won't see very much lobbing in singles, but in doubles it's a very effective weapon. The court is much bigger. There's more room to traverse in the doubles court, so consequently if you get caught up front, a lob is a spectacular shot, whereas in singles if the guy's up front and his opponent has a shot, he's going to make a hard driving shot that will die in the back of the court. They're basically, unlike tennis, two different games. You think differently, you react differently. Such as the game of squash, speed, agility, and a keen sense of strategy must be maintained at all times. But the question still remains, how is it that more players of high caliber play have come from Marion than any other club in the nation or the country? Perhaps Darwin Kingsley said it best. Well, of course, they have fine facilities. They've had excellent professional teaching in the past and present, and they have not overlooked the juniors. In fact, that's one of the stresses of the programs at Million, not just in squash, they do it in soccer and tennis and everything else. But you go to many areas, and this is one of the things our office is trying to develop. There's no junior program going in a whole city, let's say. And here we have a junior program in the city, and have a super program at Marion, where past national champions are on the court Saturday mornings, working under the direction of a professional, teaching these kids, and it pays off. Uh, you know, success generates success. The list of Marion members in the national championship titles which they have won at times seems endless. Donald Strachan, Willing Patterson, Charles Brenton, Hunter Lott, Deal Mateer, Sam Howe, and Ben Heckscher are but a few of those who have gained national prominence in the world of squash. But why? How is it that so many have come from one club to reach such heights? Bill Wilson cited the club's teaching pros as the main reason. You know, we've had some great pros here over the years, uh, for which the William White's been named. Uh, William White, Bill White, Jim Tully, Brennan McCorry. And uh, I think another factor is our own national champions have put things back into the game, giving instructions to our younger fellows as they develop in their playing years. Marion's first squash pro was James Tully Sr., the first in a line of men who not only imparted a fine knowledge of the game to young squash players, but a sense of fair play which carried them far both on and off the court. And of those many pros, perhaps best remembered today is William White. And speaking of the many great squash players that came from Marion, the club history reads, this stellar galaxy was not in the stars. It was a cumulative achievement of William White. Whitey was, for many, many years, the soul of the Marion Cricket Club. Apart from his technical skill, he had the gift of inspiring the young with a true spirit of sportsmanship. Through his untiring efforts, many promising players learned how to become champions. One of those champions who learned from William White was Deal Mateer. <laughs> January 3, 1955, G. Deal Mateer meets Azam Khan of Pakistan in the final match of the United States Open Squash Championships. Mateer defeats Khan by three games to nothing and wins his first of two Open titles on this day, January 3, 1955. In a recent interview, Deal Mateer spoke of his start in squash and his memories of Whitey. I 
been playing the game of squash since about age 15, which represents about 40 years of play. I've been fortunate enough to compete at a number of levels in national competition, starting, I guess, first with the National Intercollegiates through the National Amateur, National Open, and more recently, U.S. Amateur Doubles, the last 10 years of which uh, I've competed with two sons of mine. Uh, we had two pros here at Marion at that time, uh, Bill White, known as Whitey, and also Brendan McCrory. I took uh, lessons alternately from each one of them, and they were, in their own right, outstanding coaches. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Whitey. What is it that you remember about him, and, and you say he's an outstanding coach. Why? Well, the first thing I remember about Whitey was him sort of uh, chuckling as he would uh, take maybe one or two steps per point, and I would be running from one corner of the court to the other corner of the court. Uh, he had, uh, I think, a flair for the game that very few people had, and I think he was one of the first people that introduced the so-called boast shot, which is a three-wall shot designed to, to have the ball nick between where the floor uh, meets the, uh, the wall. Uh, I think Whitey was originally from England, and he had great racket work and just a good instinctive knowledge of the game. A lot of people talk about Whitey as being uh, really good with younger players, too. I mean, he helped a lot of people develop. He wasn't just a good squash player himself. Right. He had great enthusiasm for the game, and I think his enthusiasm uh, just uh, was distributed, especially with the, with the younger players, and got them enthusiastic uh, for the game. No question about that. What if In the mid-1950s, the era of William White gave way to an equally talented man, James Tully, Jr. Tully was the son of Marion's first squash pro, and he did not fail to continue the tradition of excellence which his father and others had started. John Nimick, presently ranked as one of the top five professional squash players internationally, recalled Jim Tully and his talents as a teacher. Well, I took some from uh, Joe Coyle and from Jimmy Tully, who's been a pro here for years and years and one of the best thinkers and analysts of the game living. What do you mean by best thinkers? Well, he's got a very, very uh, disciplined strategy as to what you should do with the ball and when you should do the correct thing with the ball so that you don't play a game that's based just on reflexes and, sp and speed and strength. You play it really based on, on your mind, so mental discipline. While John Nimick's present status in the world of squash stands as proof to Jim Tully's teaching skills, still more flattering is the fact that Marion's current teaching pro, Joe Coyle, is also a Tully pupil. Well, I started 15 years ago at Philadelphia Cricket Club on Bill Kenny and then transferred over here to Marion and worked under Jimmy Tully, which is really the person that taught me everything I know about squash. Asked what made Tully such a successful teacher, Joe responded. The big thing with Jimmy is he is so strong on fundamentals that it's hard to describe fundamentals in a book. You can, but it's very, I think in his, in his little way on the court, the way he gets across to you, that it, it makes it a lot easier to play the game. I think he can adapt to anyone's ability easier than any other professional I've ever seen. While further superlatives may be unnecessary, it seems only right to include the words of one other Marion squash enthusiast, Don Belcher. Well, first of all, because uh, just as uh, who's the best squash player is determined by who wins the match, uh, I, I think the best squash professional is, is the man who's turned out the most winners. And uh, James Tully has a, has a list of national champions in uh, singles and now in doubles uh, that would uh, fill a room. Uh, the, the great players of the world have, uh, of certainly of the United States, I shouldn't say of the world because that takes its softball, the, the, the soft squash ball. Uh, but the great players of the United States have played, I've learned under Jimmy Tully. I should at this time mention that Don Belcher is the chairman of the William White Squash Tournament. One might rightfully call this tournament the centerpiece of Marion squash season. Many years ago, after the club had completed construction of two brand new singles courts and one doubles court, members Ben Heckscher and Sam Howe came up with the idea of a tournament as a means of reciprocating the hospitality they had received throughout other U.S. cities. 
There would be no prize money, only a trophy, and the pleasure of playing the best in front of an audience who knew the game. As for a name for the tournament, the answer was simple. Well, the singles are called the William White singles after uh, uh, a beloved squash professional, squash and tennis professional, the head pro here for years named uh, uh, William White, Whitey, um, and it was named in his honor. The McCrory uh, Tully doubles are also named after two other uh, professionals at Marion, Brendan McCrory and James Tully. Uh, James Tully is still alive and, uh, and, and still teaches at Marion, on, and is, he's kind of a consultant. Uh, but he's here every week, uh, and as a matter of fact, was present at the presentation of the, of the awards at the end of uh, at the end of this tournament. So they're named after three professionals here. Uh, Jim Telly is one of the greatest professionals that ever lived in squash. For almost 20 years, Deal Matier has enjoyed the William White both as a participant and spectator. He asked how it affected the club and why he thought it continued to be such a success. It's a major help to the to building the, the, the game of squash at this club. And I might say that Don, far and away, has been the best chairman that we've ever had for the tournament. He is just a, a tireless worker in getting good players to come and play in the tournament, as exemplified by the doubles draw in the McRory tournament this past year. It was far and away the best draw that we've had in the last 10 years, and Don Belcher certainly deserves 99% uh, of the credit uh, for having that kind of a, a tournament. Uh, tournament chairman Don Belcher's concerns are all the details, big and small. Therefore, organizing the tournament is not a one-man job. My main concerns are, that, uh, first of all, that the players get to the club, uh, that there's not a snowstorm, or the planes aren't late, uh, that, that they get here on time, that they're met and received cordially and uh, meet their host family uh, if they have one, if they've asked for one, if they've asked for accommodations, that uh, their matches start on time, that there's a referee there with a pencil and a score pad and the squash ball's ready and two judges and behind the scenes there are people running around to be sure that when these, these great squash players walk on the court they look up and someone drops a ball down to them and sits down with a score pad and after an, uh, an appropriate warm-up period says, are you ready to play? It, it's got to run smoothly. Uh, and because, again, because of this great Marian tradition of squash, I've got a whole host of people that uh, I can call on to do that. As part of the organizing effort, club pro Joe Coyle knows a smoothly run tournament benefits players and gallery alike, as the best come back again and again. The biggest attraction is the way the club runs the tournament. The fact that the members care so much for the players, they take care of the players, they house the players, the club itself gives them a party, and I just think it's the camaraderie here at Marion that brings the players back. One past participant in William White is Marion Cricket Club member John Nimick. John explained what it meant to win in 1982. Well, it means a lot because you come from this area, this club, the members of support you, uh, and then you can come back and, and play at the hometown tournament, and a lot of the good players were here. In fact, it was a fantastic draw, and to play in front of my parents was a thrill as well because I don't get to do that very often. And then to win it and have my name on a plaque here at the club uh, was probably one of the highlights of my career so far. The wife of asked if the William White could sustain the legacy of quality squash, Don Belcher's enthusiastic reply left little room for doubt. Well, from the, uh, the letters that I've been getting since the tournament uh, from players in both singles and doubles, I think we're going to have a similar draw next year. By that I mean the, the same high caliber. Um, I, uh, maybe I'm an optimist, but I think it will be even better. I think the reputation of this tournament has been high, but this year was such a fine tournament and there's been so much uh, echo effect uh, uh, from this uh, tournament that people are going to say, darn, I wish I'd gone to that, and, and they're going to go in, they're going to come in 1985. Uh, my personal opinion and my hope is that we can, uh, we can get some of the professionals to come in the singles area. In the doubles area, we've had no trouble. The professionals come, they play in the doubles. I don't know why we haven't had that uh, success in the singles. We have the greatest amateur players in the world. Kenton Jernigan, that won it, he's one of the greatest amateurs that ever played the game at his age. He's a, he's a young college uh, man from Harvard. Uh, and he can beat most of the pros that'll come here, but not all of them. And uh, 
I want to get some of those pros here and let them test those amateurs out. We don't, we don't want the, the pros because it'll make the tournament any, any better in terms of skill-wise. Uh, I, I want, uh, we want to improve the game. And when you get the best professionals in the world playing the best amateurs, everybody wins. The audience loves it. Uh, the amateur learns something. Maybe the pro learns something if he gets whipped. And, uh, you know, I want the greatest tournament in the world to be better, and it will be. In 1985, you come see us. We're going to be marvelous.